well, we're not going to be spinning like that today, but hopefully we'll be turning some wood. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're going to look at my latest shop edition, a wood lathe. So let's take a look at this tool and see if we can learn how to use it. So I literally have no experience with a wood lathe. Never had one lesson. However, it is something that I've wanted to get into since I first started woodworking. And one of the reasons why I haven't purchased a lathe until now is because these tools are fairly expensive and I wanted to do more than just turn a pen. And from my limited experience of looking at lathes, that seems to be how they're priced. The more capacity, the more you're gonna spend. So what did I do? Well, you guessed it. I Googled deep and I found a wood lathe that's 14 by 40 inches with a half horsepower for just over $200. And if you have any experience with wood lathes, you'll know that you just can't purchase the lathe itself. You're going to need some chisels. And this lathe comes with three chisels included. Yeah, Dizzle, I'm about to bounce to the spizzle and get a 40 izzle, then I'll be at my baby mizzles. A chisel. So who makes this lathe? Well, let's go check it out. So inside this box is the Weber 14 by 40 half horsepower lathe. Let's unbox this and see what's inside. So my first impressions with this tool is this thing is massive. This should be able to accommodate me for a long period of time without having to upgrade, assuming it suits my needs. You'll also notice the chisels in back, the instructions, as well as a few pieces here that we're going to assemble. So let's do that next. Now, one thing you'll notice in this time lapse is I keep on referring to the paperwork that came with this machine. And there's a reason for that because I found the paperwork just a little bit confusing. Well, I finally got this thing assembled and a couple notes about the assembly. The first thing is it's really nice because they provide you all the tools you need to get this thing assembled. The second note is there are actually no instructions on how to assemble this. Now there are things like this parts diagram and instructions on how to use the tool, but there's no direct instructions. But I was able to assemble it. And as I said before, I have no experience with lathes, so it's really not that difficult. So now that we have this thing assembled, let's go over some of the basic physical components of this machine. First off, in the front of the machine, you'll see the on and off switch, and this does have a safety lock. On the side of the machine is where the pulley mechanism is, and this is held together with a bolt. If we open it up, you can see that this is a four-speed machine. This machine will go 810 RPM, 1180 RPM, 1700 RPM, and 2480 RPM. If we take a look at the front of the lathe, you can see the tool rest, and this tool rest can be moved up and down with just a twist of this knob. You can also move the tool rest left and right by twisting the knob on bottom to loosen it to the left and tighten it down to the right. If we take a look at the spindle driver, you'll notice there's a little screw here, and this comes with two attachments. Let me show you what those are. The first attachment is the face plate, and this is perfect when dealing with larger pieces of wood. You screw your workpiece directly into this face plate and you can turn things like bowls. The second piece has four little spurs on it and this is for smaller items. This is perfect for things like spindles. The last piece that I want to show you on this tool is the tailstock assembly. This has a freely rotating head on it with a point on the very end. Once you have your workpiece installed on the lathe, you cinch it down with this little knob in the back. And this tailstock assembly moves in the same fashion as the tool rest by turning this knob to the left. You can loosen it up so that you can move the assembly wherever you want. Once you're happy with the position, you can lock it down by turning to the right. Well, that's about it for the physical components of this machine. Now I want to get into some of the fun stuff, which is to turn something for the very first time. And I'm sure I'm going to make some mistakes along the way. So if you have some experience with turning, leave a comment and let me know how I can improve my skills. I know more than you. All right. So one of the first things that I want to do is to make sure that that lathe is completely stable. So I'm going to clamp this lathe down in a number of spots just to make sure that it doesn't move on me. Now that I have my lathe clamped up and it's quite secure, I'm now going to grab my workpiece. And in this case, I'm going to use some pine 4x4. Four four. <laughs> oh, look, John, it's red pine. They were going to put flecked linoleum over this beautifully preserved, knotty red pine. Most people in this world, John, are ass And the main reason that I want to use pine is because it's quite soft. And since I've never turned before, I want to use a material that's not going to put off a whole lot of resistance. So the first thing that I want to do is to find the exact center on both sides of this 4x4. And I'll do this by connecting the lines on the diagonals of each of the corners.
Now that I have my centers marked on both sides of the 4x4, I now want to take my piece with the spurs on it. And I want to take the very tip of this and align it with the very center of that wood. So just like you would with a Forstner bit, I'll put the point of this spurred piece right in the center of that wood. Once I have it in line, I can tap it down with a hammer. This is our new uh, electric hammer. I'm going to plug it in and let you see how it works. Okay, this, this is a whole lot easier than the old fashioned way, folks. With the spurred piece directly in the center of my wood, I can now take my workpiece and screw it onto my lathe. Now I can tighten down the spurred piece to the lathe using the included wrenches. Now that we have our workpiece attached to the motor of the lathe, we now need to attach our tailstock assembly to our workpiece. And to do this, we'll simply line the tip of our tailstock assembly to the center of our workpiece and tighten it down. Now that I have my workpiece attached to my lathe, it's now time to set up my tool rest. And here I have my tool rest set up so it's completely parallel with the workpiece and there's no interference between the tool rest and the workpiece itself. With everything set up, it's now time to take a look at some of the chisels we'll be using to carve down this wood. So these are the three chisels that come with this lathe. You have a gouge chisel, a skew chisel, as well as a parting chisel. Now it's my understanding that the gouge chisel is one of the most commonly used chisel when doing wood turning. This is used to smooth out rough stock and it's also used to do roundovers. The parting chisel, which has a V-shape on the very end, is used for setting diameters as well as scraping. And finally, the skew chisel is commonly used to cut V's and beads as well as to do your finish cuts on your turning. But these aren't the only turning tools that I purchased for this lathe, as I noticed a lot of turning tools have a different design. And these are the extra tools that I purchased, and you can see they're chisels. The difference, however, is they have reversible and replaceable tips. You can see there's a parting chisel, a skew chisel, as well as two gouge chisels. And I think I'm really going to like these tools, as they have a very hefty construction, and I'll be assured that they'll always be sharp, either by replacing the blade or simply reversing it. But for this video, we're going to stick with what comes in the box. So let's not waste any time and make our first cuts with this lathe. So our first cuts are going to be made with a gouge tool. And I've got my lathe set up to 810 RPMs, which is its slowest setting. And what I'm going to do for this first cut is to slowly go back and forth, resting my index finger right up against that tool rest. This should slowly cut away the edges until we get a round surface. Before we get to cutting, however, I did want to mention a couple of safety items that I'll be wearing while doing this turning. Let me show you what those are. So first and foremost is this MaxView face shield. Let's unbox this and I'll show you what it's all about. So the nice thing about this face shield is it has an anti-fog mask. And I wore this around the house a little bit yesterday. Yep, that's exactly what happened. And this thing doesn't fog at all. The other nice thing about this safety shield is it works just like a welder's mask. You can lift it up and get it out of your way when it's not in use. Lastly, this mask can accommodate almost any size head just by twisting this knob to tighten it up or loosen it up. Now that will protect my eyes and my face, but it won't protect my lungs. And that's why I'll be wearing a dust mask. So let's get started and power up this lathe. So one of the first things that you'll notice as I trim down this piece of wood is that the tool rest is moving. This is something that I struggled with when I initially started off with this tool. What I found is that you really need to clamp down that screw that holds the tool rest in place for it to be secure. So after using the gouge for a bit, I can say that these chisels don't come very sharp. However, they are sharpenable, so that's something I'm going to work on. In the meantime, I'm going to switch over to those other chisels and see how they work. And that is an absolute world of difference. So I'm going to continue on with these other chisels until we get this thing rounded off. So as I continue to pare this wood down, I'm really enjoying it how well these new chisels are working. As the wood becomes more round, chiseling becomes much easier. This is because there's less resistance from those corners. And all I'm doing here is chiseling for a bit, stopping the lathe, and checking for my progress. 
So I finally got this workpiece rounded off with my gouge. Now let's take a look at it and I'll show you what it looks like. And here you can see that 4x4 now has a round shape right in the middle of it. Now one thing that I noticed, once I got closer and closer towards that round shape, that gouge became much more easy to use. But I also want to try out some of these other tools. And since we're starting off with a round shape, I think I want to make a wooden mallet that I can use in my shop. So what I'm going to do next is to grab my parting tool and mark out where I'm going to place a handle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to take my pencil and mark out the start and the stop of where I want my handle to be. Now that I've done that, I'm going to grab my parting tool. And what I'm going to do now is to take the parting tool and reduce the diameter where I struck those lines. What I'm looking for here is a handle that's approximately one and a half inches thick. Now that I have those lines marked out, I'm now going to go back to the gouge and reduce that diameter. So here I'm just going back and forth between the parting tool and the gouge so that I can get the diameter of this handle exactly how I want it. So now that we've used the parting tool and the gouge tool, I'm now going to try to use out the skew tool. This tool should help me smooth out all those rough edges before we move on to sanding. So now that I have this rough shape turned out on this lathe, I'm now going to take some sandpaper just to smooth it out just a tad. Now that we've done some sanding, let's take a closer look at our first attempt at using this lathe. And this by no means is a final product. However, it is a good look at some of the form and functionality of this lathe. And here's a look at our rough product. As you can see, it turned out quite smooth for the mallet head as well as the handle. Now, if I were to continue on with this, I would cut off the top and the bottom, and then we would have the completed mallet. So I'm quite pleased with the form and functionality of this lathe. For my first turning project, this turned out okay, and that's all I was looking for. I obviously have a lot more to learn, but this was a great experience in my first time working with a lathe and all the tools that come with it. And for just under $200, I think this is a great opportunity for somebody that wants to get into wood turning, but isn't quite sure they want to spend a whole lot of money. Now, there are a couple of items that I'm a little bit concerned about with this lathe. First and foremost is the tool rest. When I was turning the wood, the tool rest came loose a couple of times. I had to stop the lathe and tighten down the tool rest. So that's something on this lathe that I'm either going to upgrade or make sure that I spend extra special attention to every single time I use this tool. The second thing is that the tools that came with this lathe aren't sharp at all. So when you get this lathe, you should expect to have to spend some time sharpening these tools. And that's why I personally think it's worth upgrading to some specialty tools so that you won't be frustrated once you start working with this tool. But all in all, I think this lathe is great value for the money, especially if you're just starting out like me. Well, thanks for joining me today on my first attempt at working with a lathe. I know I didn't do everything perfect and I'm sure you'll let me know how I can improve. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like and leave a comment. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.